Let's now take what we've learned about aerodynamic forces and moments and apply it back to our uh, foundational equations of motion here. So remember, um, these are this is these are uh, our equations of motion. So uh, we've actually got 13 states here that we're integrating forward in time in this flight simulator, for example. And uh, and and this is written in terms of the quaternion. So you see the quaternion here, uh, quaternion components in here uh, for the weight vector, but. Um, but in general, what we're going to talk about in this video would apply no matter what formulation you're using, you know, whether you're using the quaternion or the Euler angle formulation or, or direction cosine or, or whatever you're using. OK, so uh, so in these equations, what we have here are are these uh, aerodynamic forces and moments. So we've got a force vector there and a moment vector here. So these are what we've been calling them. We call them the pseudo aerodynamic uh, uh, forces and moments and so that's that force vector there and the moment vector right there and that's because uh, they include uh, they include the the uh, aerodynamic forces and moments as well as uh, forces and moments due to thrust or the or the propulsion system okay So uh, thrust and propulsion. Okay, so uh, so we've got a jet engine, or if you even got a rocket motor uh, that's you know creating thrust and um, and and or propeller the aircraft that has thrust uh, distributed by its propellers, the location of the propellers and the direction of the propellers. So uh, anyway, this this is all being included in those forces and moments, and then uh, the rest of these components come from, for example, this is our weight vector, uh, Coriolis forces. Um, and then different moments due to the, the motion of the aircraft and the inertia of the aircraft, other gyroscopic effects on board the aircraft. And then this is our location, X, Y, and Z is a function of time. And then our change, or excuse me, our change in our, our uh, location and change in our quaternion. And remember, this is, again, the flat earth um, uh, representation of the dynamics. Uh, and, and so this is assuming a, a short flight path, for example, that's, that's not uh, traversing a large uh, 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 distance upon the earth you know so uh anyway so so we're including the aerodynamic and the thrust forces in these vectors so that's why we call this the pseudo aerodynamic forces and moments okay so using the information in the previous videos now we can uh we can compute what those would be uh for these uh for these equations of motion so here's the force vector and the moment vector let's go over the force vector first so we need it in body fixed coordinates right because that's how we're going to apply it this is in body fixed coordinate system but uh but those forces and moments may have been given in a different coordinate system so uh so for example um here's here's our force in the body fixed coordinate system and uh and and this first vector here this is our force due to propulsion and so we're not going to talk about this at this point we're just going to say that some vector okay um that we have from our propulsion system and that depends of course on on what kind of propulsion system it is and and uh, uh and how it's laid out on the aircraft uh but uh anyway so so this is just that force vector and then the the forces the aerodynamic forces are often given to us actually in a coefficient form where they've been normalized by this out front so uh, in order to get it back into a dimensional form we have to multiply it by one half rho v squared sw sw is the wing area that's usually what's used to normalize aerodynamic forces in, in any of the coordinate systems, actually. So you'll see uh, we have to multiply it by, by this constant out front. Uh, well, not necessarily constant, depending on your, your current density and velocity, but, uh, but this, uh, this information out front in order to get this in dimensional form. Because usually we'll have a co an axial coefficient, uh, a side force coefficient, a normal coefficient, uh, and and we need to redimensionalize that to get the dimensional forces um, out of that. Okay, now often those forces are given in either the stability or the wind coordinate system. So so it's uh, and sometimes they're given in the axial or excuse me in the body fixed coordinate system. And if they are, then that's very simple. We just apply them directly. If they're given in the the uh, stability coordinate system, this is the information in the stability coordinate system. Those forces in non dimensional form again. Uh, then uh, then we need to transform them using the sines and cosines. And by the way, the little s and the little c, those stand for sine and cosine of whatever angle is, a, is associated with them there. Um, and then, of course, if the information is given in the wind coordinate system, we have, if we have lift, 
side force and drag in the wind coordinate system, then we need to use this uh, information here to rotate that using sines and cosines of alpha and beta to get that back into the, the body fixed coordinate system, okay? So no matter what uh, information we're given here, we can use these equations here then to, to get that back into the body fixed coordinate system. And then that's the same with our moments. So our aerodynamic moments, uh, again, we're going to, uh, and this is a pseudo aerodynamic moment. It, it includes the, the moment due to propulsion. And so, um, and then we, we're going to add to that uh, a non-dimensional moment. Usually our, our moments are also non-dimensionalized. Uh, and remember, a moment about the x-axis is usually non-dimensionalized by the wingspan. A moment about the pitch axis is usually um, non-dimensionalized by the, the uh, mean chord. And then the uh, a moment about the yaw axis is usually normalized by um, or, or put in non-dimensional form using the wingspan again. So, so these lateral moments here, we usually use a, a wingspan to non-dimensionalize those. A longitudinal moment, we use the wing cord. So that's why when we put these back in dimensional form, we've got to multiply these out front by these different lengths. And then again, the one half rho v squared sw, the same as what we've used in the forces. Uh, okay, so you'll see lengths associated with each of these. And, and this can get a little bit confusing um, because, uh, for example, if we were given moments in the in the uh, wind coordinate system, and we need to get those, again, back to the body fix coordinate system because that's how they're going to be applied in our equations of motion. Uh, in order to do that, we've got uh, components of the uh, pitching moment as well. So, for example, this is a moment about the, uh, the X body um, uh, uh, body axis here and uh, but it depends now on on the pitching moment in the wind axis because of, we're doing this transformation and so but that pitching moment was normalized by a uh, mean chord and so anyway you'll you'll just see some of these lengths being carried around here in order to keep all the dimensions correct but uh, uh, anyway these equations here this is a summary of how these equations or these transformations now can be used to get forces and moments from any coordinate system back into the body fixed coordinate system Add add then the uh, the propulsion uh, forces and moments, and uh, and finally we have that uh, we have everything we need to create this uh, pseudo aerodynamic force and moment uh, vector that will be applied then in our equations of motion.